Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Elise. All right, for all the effort that she put into making today happen. Honey, after 30 plus years, you keep getting more and more beautiful. Also, thank you to Amy and the staff at Harvest on Hudson. And to Ken and the Function Band for being so awesome. And most of all, thanks to all of you uh, for joining us, for being here today to celebrate the marriage of Amanda and Paul. <clears throat> Thanks especially to those who've come from so far away. Uh, cousins from California, right here. Uh, we have uh, Elisa's posse from Queens. All right. We have my posse here from Brooklyn. We have our friends from Danbury. And by the way, the people at table number 10, the rheumatology staff, say that they're the best dancers in the room. <clears throat> We're going to have to see about that. And of course, thanks to all of Amanda and Paul's friends who've come from all over the place. <clears throat> to my precious daughter, Amanda, thank you for making it so easy for mom and me. You always had the grades in school, really nice friends, and you never got into too much trouble. Except for that hen house place up in Boston. <laughs> I love you, sweetheart, and I'm so happy that you found a young man of such high quality and integrity. When Amanda and Paul first started dating a few years ago, <clears throat> they came up to Connecticut to visit us. And Elise and I took them out to a small place that some of you may know called Sesame Seed in Danbury, where upstairs it was kind of dimly lit and they pipe in jazz music. Well, <clears throat> I heard a tune that I thought I recognized. And so I said, I think that's Freddie Hubbard on the horn. Well, Paul hesitated, probably unsure if he should correct me <laughs> so soon after meeting, because we were all in our best behavior, still getting to know each other. <clears throat> but he did correct me. He said, that's not Freddie Hubbard. He said, that's Miles Davis. <laughs> well, he was right, of course. And I thought to myself, this is good. This is exactly what Amanda needs. <laughs> Not only someone who's kind and loving and supportive, but really smart and interesting too. A partner who will challenge her. I'm also happy that Paul's parents, Ray and Lavinia and his brother, Mark, are similarly kind and generous people. They're very easy to like. It's a dream come true for Elise and me, that we're all connected now. I'll conclude with the most important thing of all, the secret to a happy marriage. Now this is something that Aunt Lita and Uncle Joe probably know, because they've been together for over 60 years. The secret is very simple. One should always consider the needs of the other. Do the things, the little things, every day that make each other happy. With that, let us raise our glasses and toast Amanda and Paul Chang, wishing you happiness, health, and prosperity. And now I'd like to introduce Paul's father, Ray Chang. And then after that, my son Daniel's going to say a few words, too. Thank you, David and Elise, for a wonderful party. 
your warmth and love has made this a very special occasion. It's indeed a fantastic celebration of the marriage of our eldest uh, children. And it's wonderful to meet uh, Amanda's broader family and, and friends. Uh, congratulations again, Amanda and, and Paul. You both uh, look great and beautiful. Uh, what a happy and, and awesome couple you are and you look today. And for the rest of your lives, you know that uh, you have our deepest love and, and family backing. Let me add to David's and Elise's thanks and welcome to all of you, relatives and friends, for attending and celebrating with us. Many of you have come from afar, and for that, we especially thank you. Amanda is already well known to and, and loved by the Chang family. The Chang family is a global one. Uh, we are spread out uh, throughout different parts of the world. Uh, last December in Melbourne, Australia, we were very happy that uh, Amanda was able to come over and be introduced to my family. Uh, we all converged in, in Melbourne and uh, had a celebration, an early celebration of their wedding uh, in Asia Pacific. Uh, that was well attended by our friend, uh, relatives and friends. And uh, Amanda made a very, very fantastic impression on everybody. Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, That was very easy, Amanda, because uh, she's beautiful, she's intelligent, and accomplished. So that, that was very, very exciting for us uh, in the Chang family. Um, very importantly, Amanda uh, loves food <laughs> as much as any Chang. And uh, we are amazed and impressed by her adventurousness uh, to try different uh, foods. Uh, and she can render an opinion we've found on any dish as well as we can. So that's an immediate reception and integration with the Chang family. Uh, Amanda has since become uh, a very active member already in, in the Chang uh, group. Uh, we are in regular contact and she engages in the family fun and laughter all the time, uh, as well as being looped into somewhat serious discussions. We can also see how Paul is uh, having such a great time having Amanda as a partner. There is a spring in his step and he can't seem to stop smiling. They went both to uh, LA two years ago. Uh, last week, uh, Paul happily graduated from UCLA with his MBA. <laughs> We're sure uh, Paul and Amanda will have a wonderful future to together. Today, on behalf of my mom and my brothers and our families, let me say again a huge congratulations to Amanda and Paul, and a very big thank you to David, Elise, and Dan for hosting this momentous occasion. Thank you all. Okay, hey, 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 how are y'all doing? <clears throat> Okay, so I've never written a speech before, so pardon me if I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, this is gonna get a little personal, maybe a little heavy, but it's gonna have a happy ending, so. <clears throat> so holy heck, my sister's married, and gosh darn it, I'm really, really proud of her. I mean, for a myriad of reasons, but we can get into that at the tail end of this. Me and Amanda, we didn't always get along when we were younger. I mean, when we were really little, we were fine, but when you're really little, there's still plenty of time before you figure out the things that annoy you about your friends and family. Amanda was always a worldlier person than me, big social circle, always going out on the weekends, so on and so forth. Me, I got most of my notions about life from watching sitcoms and cartoons, and from those, I determined that as a little brother, it was my purpose in life to make my older sister's life more difficult. I'd lurk around the house, chuck stuffed animals at her, hog the TV, make gooky faces at her friends, and just be a general nuisance. I don't think she much cared for it, and in hindsight, I don't super blame her. Amanda was always a bit of an odd man out in our family. Our parents and I, with our steady diets of pop culture spanning generations, would constantly be slinging references at each other during dinner time, to the point where a sentence wouldn't go by without some kind of obscure reference nod to, I don't know, Austin Powers or Star Trek or something. Oh, the eye rolls we got from this one, too cool to be a nerd like the rest of her family. 
I am mildly ashamed to admit that I wasn't present much in Amanda's high school years. She was nice enough to drive me to school sometimes after she got her license, which I very much appreciated because it meant not having to wake up at 5.40 every morning to catch the bus, and would even take me to Starbucks a couple of times. But for the most part, we just didn't really have much to talk about. I was all about games, TV, and the goings-on of the spheres they're in, and while Amanda was no slouch in her own appreciation of music and film, our tastes were just too different. But when I left home to go to college, I found there were many new difficulties in life that, shockingly, cartoons had not prepared me for. What? Who would have thought? I was nervous, withdrawn, and frightened for the future. But as it turns out, I had a guru in my corner who was already a few years ahead of the curve, my own sister. Having left home several years prior, Amanda had become an even more worldly person, or maybe I just became worldly enough to see that she had been, become that way a long time ago. I really couldn't tell you. As I scuttled my way through college and beyond, Amanda became something of a role model for me. The world was a scary, demanding place, and yet she had struck out on her own to stake her claim on this dumb little island we call Earth. It was remembering her courage and perseverance that helped me get through some of my own trying years. When we would come home for the holidays and summers, I found a warmth between us that had been missing in years prior. I tried to dial back the references a bit and told her about my life and the things that mattered to me, and she, <laughs> well, she managed to find a little nerdiness inside her after all. I remember our first real conversation about anime. Oh, I was overjoyed. We enjoyed seeing each other and talking, not to mention taking an occasional drive to escape from our parents' lovable idiosyncrasies, let's call them. Now, so many years later, here I stand giving my blessings to my sister and the wonderful man she loves. When we flew out to California for the original ceremony, the last thing I said to Amanda before leaving was this. Amanda, you've done it. You've cracked the code. You're an adult. I think I've used the word proud a few times so far, but here's the big one. I have never been prouder of my sister than I am right now. She has a job she loves, a happy relationship, and she gets to live in a star-studded city, which, based on her love of New York when we were kids, I had a feeling that last one was going to happen. I hope that she will have a long, wonderful life to <clears throat> together with Paul. In fact, I think they will. Paul's a real stand-up guy. When I first met him, I was gonna do the whole overprotective family thing, like as a joke, but he's such a cool dude, I couldn't even do it as a joke. Look at this guy, he's great, I love him. So, so here's to the two of you. Amanda, my dear, dear sister, I make this proclamation for all to hear. I hereby relinquish my duties as an annoying little sibling. You're not my moody sister with weird taste in music anymore. You're my wonderful, kind sister, Amanda, and I wish nothing but happiness, success, and God willing, a few laughs for your life ahead. Oh, and P.S., if you guys eventually have kids, not trying to voice any expectations here, you're a modern couple, you live life whatever way makes you happy, I'm just saying that if you guys have kids, I am totally ready to embrace my role as a weird uncle. I think, I think that might be the one thing my years of television consumption might work for. Thank you. Now that was his speech.